Hi, in this video, we are going to see how to run GWAS using software Plink. For this analysis, we are going to use the first two data set, the exome chr22 underscore clean dot pad and dot map. Now, in our previous video, about quality control in GWAS using Plink, we created these two data set. So if you already have not, then I'll recommend you to watch the video about quality control uh, in which we show how to create these clean data sets. So uh, for GWAS, uh, in this video, we are only going to cover GWAS for unrelated individuals. Now, Plink can also handle related individual in certain cases. So for dichotomous outcome, it can handle TDT. And for continuous data, it uses a permutation test. But that is uh, off this video. In this video, we are only going to cover for unrelated individuals. So in the quality control using Plink video, uh, we discussed how to create data in Plink, how to transform it into different Plink formats. So if you do not know how to use Plink, uh, again, I would recommend you to watch that video first before moving to this GWAS video. So in this analysis, I am going to use a separate phenotype file. So we have a third file apart from pad and a map file. And that file is called exomechr22.phenoco. So I'll show you how that file looks like. Now this file includes phenotype as well as covariate. So this file is a text file, although I opened it in uh, Excel-like uh, software, but this is a text file. And this file has headers. The first two columns have to be family ID and individual ID with the headers FID, IID. So third column onwards, you can have any kind of phenotype or covariate. Since I combined these phenotype and covariates in one file. I have both of them, but you can have two separate files, one for phenotype and other for covariate. And then you have headers for all those columns. In this particular case, I had two phenotypes. One is a continuous one called pheno1. Another is dichotomous called pheno2. And then the, I have a bunch of covariates. So there is first covariate called covariate and it's a continuous outcome. Uh, second covariate I'm going to use is sex, which is coded as one and two. And then I have columns called C1 to C10. And these are principal components that we computed in our video with quality control using Plink. So in that video, I showed how to get these principal components. So I'm going to use these principal components as covariates in our model. So this file includes both phenotype and covariate. And like I said, you can use separate files for them. And in today's analysis, I'll show you how to call those different files if you have two different files in your analysis. So the first part would be, we will be using dichotomous outcome. So for that we have various options in Plink. We can perform 
allelic test. So to perform allelic test, first we need to call our data set. Uh, but before that, uh, just like I showed you in previous video, I am going to convert our pad and map file into Plink's binary format. The reason is that compresses file, which is easier to read, quicker to read, and then it's much faster in doing analysis. So to convert that, I'm just going to use minus minus meg bed option. And I'm keeping the same file name as map and pet, but it will have different extensions. So it converted data into binary format, and here are our three different files that it created. The same file name, but the extensions are .fam, .bim, and .bed. So for further analysis, we are going to use these binary format files. So once it's converted, Let's run allelic test. For allelic test, we need to call our data set. And since it's a binary file, we use minus minus B file option. And then here I'm specifying what phenotype I want to analyze. So minus minus pheno option will read the phenotype file. In this case, the phenotype file is exome chr 22phenoco and then within that file, we need to specify which particular phenotype Plink uh, would need to use because we can have multiple phenotypes in that file. So here I'm using pheno2, which if you remember was a dichotomous outcome. And for allelic tests, the command is minus minus a sop. And as I have explained before, I always use out option and give appropriate name to output files. So in this case, I'm calling it case control allelic. So let's run the script to perform association analysis with allelic test. Now, since it's really small data set, it runs very quickly. Otherwise, it would take uh, probably a few seconds to a few minutes, depending on how big your data sets are. So again, like any other Plink log, it tells you uh, how many markers it read, how many individuals were there. And then it will say uh, what output file it created based on your options. So here we ask for allelic test. So the output extension is dot .asop. So it created this case control allelic asop output file. So let's go ahead and open this output file. So here you'll see each row is corresponds to each SNP. So you'll see this first column is chromosome number, then SNP ID, its position on the chromosome. And you'll see allele one and here allele two. And these are chi-square statistic for each SNP in analysis p-value corresponding to the p uh, chi-square statistic and the odds ratios. So this test is simply based on 
chi-square test using contingency tables. So for allelic test or some different models I, I'm going to show you, it's purely based on contingency table and then performing chi-square test on that. So we cannot really adjust for any covariates. Now, if you want to perform different tests and run different models, there is option called minus minus model instead of minus minus assault, which will perform more number of tests on the SNPs. Like if you can run recessive model, additive model, genotypic model, dominant model, and they all will be performed just with this one option. So everything else keeping same, I will just change minus minus a sock to minus minus model and rerun the analysis. And our new output file is case control genotypic dot model. Now if you take a look at this file, here we see that for each SNP there are multiple lines. There are one, two, three, four, five lines for each SNP because it's performing five different tests for each SNP. And apart from what we saw in the previous file, SNP name chromosome, allele 1, allele 2, and of course the test name, we also have freak genotypic frequencies for affected and unaffected. And again, it performs a chi-square test and we get a p-value. Now you will observe that there are lots of NAs here. The reason behind it is Plink will only perform analysis if all the counts here, all the genotypic counts for cases and control both are above 5. So if we have any value 5 or less than 5 in either affected or unaffected, Plink does not perform a test. So and you will get and is for that. For dominant recessive and genotypic test. So that's why you see lots of NAs. So for typically low allele frequencies, uh, it does not perform those tests. So this option is really helpful if you're not sure about what the underlying model is and you want to try different tests this one option will perform all the tests for you of course you'll have to correct for the extra test you have performed now if we have outcome which is dichotomous we can also perform logistic regression in Plink and one advantage in logistic regression is now we can add covariates into the model. So as I showed you before, I have some covariates in the same file, exome.chr22.phenoco. So I will use some covariates into this model. So up to this part with phenotype file and phenotype name, everything is same as before. Now I have added few options here, like minus minus covar, which tells Plink what covariate file it needs to use. And in this analysis, the file name is same, same as the phenotype file. And then we need to list what covariates we want to add in the model with option minus minus covar minus name. Now, if you remember from that file, I have a continuous variable 
called covariate i'm adding into covariate list i'm also adding sex and from 10 principal component i'm just using first two c1 and c2 so it's not necessary that you'll have to use all the covariates in the file into the model so you can just select whichever you think are appropriate and then to perform logistic regression the option is minus minus logistic and I'm calling output files as logistic now let's run this command now if you have observed Logistic regression took a little bit longer than a Lilic test or even the uh, with the model option. So it scales a little bit up if you have lots of uh, markers and individuals. So let's to take a look at the output file. Now here first few columns are same and for plink allele 1 which is denoted as A1 is always the uh, effect allele. Now here again we see that there are lots 5 rows for each SNP because in the model we have covariates and the SNP. So we also get p values for each covariate and if you want you can also suppress these covariate test rows uh, that's option is given in Plink documentation. So in this file uh, you basically get the same columns and then the test column will tell uh, what this row is corresponding to which covariate or uh, the SNP. And then we have odds ratios, a test statistic, and a p-value. So these are a few options if we want to perform association analysis on dichotomous outcome.